Hey legends, welcome back to the Mason Cox Show. Now, big news, big sporting segment coming up. Gil has been replaced. He's been dethroned by, yes, the most likely person, Andrew Dillon. We knew this a year ago. Anyway, also Adelaide Oval, absolute mayhem. Side bottom steals a victory for Collingwood. Yes, that's a little dad joke in there for you. And also we cover 60 minutes. Why it's a massive thing for the IFL. There's a lot in this episode. So lock in, sit down, and let's get into it. All right, let's get straight into it. Welcome, Brayden. Now, Mace, we're going to jump straight into the clangor, but it's not the clangor that every Collingwood fan on the planet Earth is thinking. (laughs) Anyway, I'll jump in and I'll say my clangor of the week Mm. was Saturday night's absolute blockbuster doubleheader, Melbourne v. North and West Coast v. Carlton. Because, boy, oh, boy, if you don't have a life like me, And you're sitting on the couch and you're looking to the AFL for some bloody entertainment while you didn't get a speck of it (laughs) on Saturday night. Two 100-point blowouts that we all saw coming. It it was more obvious than the replacement CEO that these things were going (laughs) to suck. And boy, oh boy, did they suck. You know, I was looking for a little, little, you know, a little crumb. A little, Mm. I was like, oh, maybe, maybe Charlie will kick 10. That'll be entertaining. Let's follow this along. Well, he can't even kick 10. He kicks nine, which is just a bigger upset than the shitty game. Oh, he's hot. He's fiery today. So my clangor, just to be specific, is whoever's doing the fixture, I don't care, fix it up. Because I don't have a life and I need to sit at home and watch footy 24-7. Yes. What's your clangor, mate? All right, my clangor, this is a week's, week's on. If you're booing Jason Horn Francis as an AFL supporter, grow up. Stop it. Just stop. Ah. Hey, not even North Melbourne fans. If you're upset because left left North Melbourne, I get it, okay? He's gone to a different team to go home to family, all right? Totally understandable. If you are literally a St. Kilda fan booing Jason Horn Francis, who has nothing to do with your club, grow up. Grow up. Oh, it just kills me. I just don't get it. Why I have to keep hearing this. Why I have to keep hearing booing. He's a 19 year old man. And it's just absurd because he's beating your ass. He's going well. And you're sitting here booing him because he's too good. I don't get it, Brayden. See what you don't understand yet, because you're still new Australian. What you got to do is tear everyone down It's the because you can't st- let anyone have some joy or success. So what you got to do when they start getting Oh, he's got tear him down, mace. You don't want him to be happy. Why would you want a 19 year old kid to go out there and be happy? Tear him down, mace. I just don't get in. Hey, if Jason Horn, friends, if you're listening to this, listen to me. Jealousy is the highest form of flattery. People that are booing you are jealous because you're doing something with your life and you're one of the best AFL players going around at your age. So if they keep booing you, don't take it personal. They're just pissed off because you're doing something they never could do. So just. Soak it in. Say, stuff you. It's not my fault you have a shit life. I'm living mine. I'm being an AFL superstar, and I'm part of this next generation of people coming through, and it's going to be awesome. Oh, we've started hot, and I'll say- What uh, happened today? Uh, Russ Lyon, you know, tried to pour some cold water on the situation. As he does, mm. old chilled Rossi going into his press conference. When he opens the door, all the smoke billows in <laughs> through the door, and he sits down, and he says, hey, I don't know, weird, weird one, but- Maybe let's don't boo a 19-year-old kid, for starters. And then secondly, it didn't friggin' help us because he mm. just diced us up through the guts anyway. So it's good to see Ross come out and, you know, defend an opposition player because yep. it's like, it's not necessary. He said if you're trying to get into his head, if you're trying to affect his game, which is what we all assume must be the reason behind him getting booed, it's not working. So let's just park that. Jason, keep doing what you're doing, legend. We've started hard. <laughs> well, man, <laughs> we, I'm already out of breath. I lost all my breath literally after the Collingwood game. I'm still going. Uh, we're we'll getting the news. Andrew Dillon's new CEO. Who cares? Um, Wait, you just, <laughs> just, <laughs> we haven't you no set up to it. So Gillen McLaughlin was the CEO, and you're telling me there's a new one? <laughs> there's a new one. To be honest, Andrew Dillon was probably pulling the strings anyway behind the scenes. And Gil, great man. Face of the AFL. Awesome the way he handled it. He was someone that was very relatable to people, I feel like. It's been going for a a year plus, I feel like. Who's going to be his replacement? It was the guy sitting next to him the whole time. Why did we release this just now? We knew this a year ago. So this is kind of weird. So what you're telling me, because I'm still trying to grasp the situation. One, 
I didn't even know Gil was wrapping up as CEO. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> they dragged that story out longer than any MRO scandal. Two, he literally went around the planet Earth leaving no stone unturned to try and find a replacement CEO. He went He went to New York. He did the whole CEO search over in America. So what you're telling me, just so I can get it and the listeners at home, he ended up picking a private school boy in an office next door. Yeah. Wow, I didn't see that coming. What? <laughs> I will say this. Uh, Andrew Dillon is a good man. And uh, he's been doing a lot for the AFL. So he's an easy understanding. But I will say that whole trip around the world, Gil, I know that was a retirement party. Don't pull some BS. We know exactly what that was. And don't tell me AFL doesn't have money. I've got the next search ready. When, when Andy Dillon's going to pack her up next time, he should take a step out of his office, <laughs> close his eyes and throw a stone. And whoever the stone hits, that's your next CEO. It's the same bloody thing. I don't get it. They, we knew they were just going to pick a private school boy. And it was, oh, why we do all this song and dance oh, every time. Man, I don't it know. happened with Andrew Demetrio. He was one, Gil was one office down. Anyway. I will say this though. <laughs> This we're hot, Andrew Dillon. I want a job after, so I love you. <laughs> what we're gonna have to do here is pull it back a notch because <laughs> everyone's ears are blown off their head at this stage. So <laughs> I will bring it back in, but another exciting story, nonetheless. Mason yeah. Cox, don't know if you know him, mm. he was on this little show out of the States. <laughs> called 60 Minutes. What, there must be what? You got 13 people watch it written down here? 13 million, which is over half the population of Australia who have never heard of AFL before. 13 million. 13 million. This isn't old 60 Minutes Australia that is just the most ridiculous thing you could possibly think of. It's literally the same thing as Current Affair. This is a legit publication in the US. It's second most watched thing as far as shows go in the US per week. Wait, so when you... When you're talking about 60 minutes, see yes. our 60 minutes, dog shit. We do stories on, you know, controversial topics like why ham increases in price around Christmas. Now, is this not not similar to that? 13 no. million. I don't. We, we don't get 13 million. A cat stuck in a tree is not going to get a freaking news story on this 60 minutes. Okay. Oh, 13 million. That's half our population is watching a story on AFL football. That's a pretty big deal. You would <laughs> think so. Well, I haven't. I haven't heard a lot about it. Unless it's been coming out of your your social media accounts, why is this not getting the attention it deserves in Australia? Uh, blows my mind. I don't know. People, like I said, don't like people being successful. Maybe I don't know what it is, but it is a big deal for AFL on an international level. Whether people realize that or not, if you can get 13 million people knowing what AFL is, you got to think Melbourne's what, 3 million people and every single person is obsessed with AFL. So if you can get 13 million people knowing what it was, it's a good sign that AFL is starting a step in the right direction in the international market. It's pretty nuts. And when I saw the uh, trailer for the 60 Minutes, <laughs> you look like, you know, Gary Ablett Sr. You're like, <laughs> selling candy, one, two, around the corner, big specky, taking the kick. Jeez, that pumped you up well. They pumped me up well. The one time you did see that vision of me selling candy, only person in the whole league that I could sell candy to, Shane Mumford. <laughs> oh, Mummy. <laughs> the slowest guy that's probably played AFL ever. It was, yeah, you got around Mummy, and then they cut it well, because you got around Toby... Kind of. Kind of. And then they just cut it off. Yep, that's that's it. perfect. That's, that's it. I will say this. They did put in there the part of me throwing the ball in on the goal line against Geelong. They did put down that. <laughs> that was in the actual clip. <laughs> so it wasn't all just birds and oh. butterflies and everything. There was some trash in there of my AFL career too. Oh, they're going to get people confused because you can't bloody throw it, Mace. But <laughs> let's, 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 big congratulations. Thank that's, you. that's a it's massive, massive. It's, it, it is. It's massive. So everyone get around it. They seem to be chucking clear clips up on YouTube because it's a bit hard to get uh, some of those things here. In the, it's on Paramount in a, Plus. Paramount, Paramount Plus? Plus is what I've been told, yeah. So yeah. check it out. Check it out. Also, we also have created a YouTube channel called Discover AFL we if have. you want to help share it to people that I feel like everyone that goes overseas always tries to explain AFL to people and they're like, what the hell is it? And you try to give an explanation and they just get more confused. So we made a YouTube channel to help people understand. Discover yeah. AFL. Check it out. If you're sick of trying to describe it to your international friends, Send them a link. Discover AFL. All right, let's jump let's into, into it. it. We got St. Kilda v. Port Adelaide now. I 
I did something brave here and I ventured out of the house on mm. Friday and I went down to the St. Kilda Port game uh, because I have a friend that's a St. Kilda supporter. Aww. And then you called me on video <laughs> time and I was like, what's this prick want? Leave me alone. I'm trying to relax. And uh, no, but I was in the middle of eating a fish taco. Yes. Now, now you, you might be thinking, why pick a fish taco uh, from Marvel Stadium? <laughs> what, what was that your choice? Well, see what I did here was I lined up to get food and I, because you're on this conveyor belt kind of line and yep. you're going past stuff and I saw uh, what I thought was fish and chips and I was like, beauty, mm. fish and chips and picked that up and then I saw chicken tacos and I was like, oh, I want, I want chicken tacos. <laughs> it's a, and then I was like, well, I can't put that back. So then I got two. So I got fish and chips and chicken tacos and then I got out and I realized it was chicken and chips and fish, fish tacos. And tacos. <laughs> oh, no. And I was like- so I ended up swapping the chicken and the fish. Anyway. Anyway. Not- I had to call you because I was doing a um, activation over at uh, Fed Square. And every single person that came to that, we had a little like miniature little chat. They wanted to chat to you. They didn't even want to chat to me. They're like, yo, how's Braden going? Where's the love life at for Braden Cox? We're going to have to change this to That's the uh, Braden Cox show. But- Two Cox, one pod. <laughs> Uh, so that, yeah, so we've already touched on the horn, Francis, but he was dicing them up through the guts. Uh, it was, you know, an okay game, nothing super spectacular. I think Port, you know, they're starting mm. to find their groove. They're looking real dangerous. Pal Pepper, Pally P was everywhere. He was mm. doing everything, breaking tackles. Charlie had that look in his eye that like, I want to murder everyone out here kind of look in his eye. And he did that in a, you know, a non-literal sense, <laughs> which was good. We don't like we don't like the alternative, and uh, yeah. So what I can say about this game is thank you, Port Adelaide. Yep, uh, I'm <laughs> Collingwood's part. <laughs> now we're number on the ladder. Uh, thank you, Port. It was an interesting game. St Kilda's been uh, been tested over the last few weeks, whether or not because everyone's pumping them up. So top of the ladder, you know, they've changed it around. Ross Lyons, new game plan, all that's working really well, and they're going to be challenged. I think a few more times. So we'll see, we'll yeah. Keep an eye on this one. Watch this space as far as St. Kilda goes, I think. Yeah, it was a good game. We get worse and worse as we go on with some of these games. But, <laughs> but uh, let's jump into the Brisbane Frio game. A couple of injury concerns. Zorko and Rich out with a hamstring and a cuff. They, yeah. they seem to miss a bit with soft tissues. Uh, super important to the squad. I don't know how it's going to affect them going forward, but they're playing some some good footy at the moment. Yeah, it's... um. Yeah, Brisbane is always one of those teams I feel like that maybe doesn't get as much attention because they're not in probably a very AFL state, if that makes sense, up in Queensland. But they are a team that has got all the uh, the right kind of chess pieces, I feel like, to be successful. They just have to really put it together once finals come around. And their team, whenever you play against them, you know they're going to bring their best football. They like really, really made us pay whenever we went up there to Brisbane. Charlie Cameron, old sake, my home country road. He, um, he's been really playing really well up there, and I think they're really starting to find their groove. So it's um, these two outs, Zorko and Rich, are not great for that. But uh, hopefully they come back soon and uh, prayers up. And Frio <laughs> at least tried to change things up. They tried yep. to handball a lot more, move it with a bit more speed, which is good to see. It didn't have, obviously, the result that they wanted, but it's good to see. Now, there was a couple of goals in the game that were nuts absurd and one of these poor blokes is gonna get robbed because they were both easy goal of the weeks in Mm. any other individual week but they both happened in the same game the same week so Walters gets tackled does a 360 breaks the tackle slams it on the boot while falling to the ground in the pocket and it rolls through across the ground and it's it's nuts It's It's, insane it's such a good goal but what I think pips it is Ashcroft's goal which is you know, akin to Daniel Wells jumping, flying karate kick through the air, but he does it from the pocket, which is insane that he can like do a jumping snap through the angle. I, I just don't, I don't understand how it went in. I don't understand how he got his boot to ball. I don't know. There's so much that just doesn't make sense about this. It's got to be goal of the year. Like a hundred percent for just a pure difficulty sp- like standpoint, it has to be goal of the year. And I also kind of thought whenever I saw this, we had mentioned this about Jaden Steven kicking an absolute tort from 60 and scoring. 
Imagine being a forward thinking that's the best option we have. It's literally a drop kick karate kick from the corner pocket is a better option than putting it to the top of the square. And you know what? He made it. So props to Ashcroft. Well done, mate. Hopefully you do it again because uh, hopefully this is not a one-off type deal. It's an insane goal if you haven't seen it. Well, it's the percentage play because it's only been done once and it's been effective 100%, 100% of the, of the time. time. <laughs> so, it's good. Statistics, Braden. <laughs> it's a good good way to sell it if you're tell, talking to the coach after the game. Oh, we'll move on to Sydney GWS. This one point thriller the derby up in sydney this is needed for the ifl i feel like this gets sydney people pumped up to want to follow it and that is what we need in a different state sydney versus gws make it a rivalry pump it up as much as you can and this game came and it went well <laughs> and uh, battle of the bridge battle of the bridge <laughs> One point victory to GWS, and it was right down to the wire. Uh, Toby Green kind of took the mark, kicked it to the pocket, and it went out of bounds. So he's doing it up the field, mm. goes down to the stoppage, is kind of left alone. And they broke it down, and he, he does really well. Like he engages with another Sydney player, and the handover's not there, pulls back, gets the ball, snaps it through, as only Toby could. And oh, it was great. And now I want to say this. I want to put it on the radar because I've been talking about it week after week. GWS are showing a hell of a lot this year. And it might not be translated to their like wins and losses yet. Mm. But for a team that's been touted as this, you know, the Ferrari, they're just like all these super slick ball users, outside runners. They're showing so much like determination and just like, gut running and they just keep going all the way to the end and it's got them a couple of wins just mm. on pure effort alone so it's awesome seeing just their effort is through the roof and like i keep harping back on the game that they played that was like 30 something degrees and they were yeah. all cramping up and it cost them probably two in a row um it's good to see them now coming out the other side and they just they fight all the way to the final side i must say this though if you're in the final moments of a game right it's a very close game there's one person that plays for GWS you probably want to put a person on to make sure he doesn't score. That would be Toby Green. Now, I'm giving you a little bit of advice. I don't know who was tagging him, but he's going to be the go-to guy. He's definitely going to be the person they're trying to get the pill to and trying to get a goal out of. So I don't know what was the game plan from Sydney there, but like I feel like that was kind of obvious it was going to him. Yeah, rough. And for Sydney, it's two that they've coughed up in the dying minutes Oof. of a uh, home game at the SCG. Obviously, the other one was the kick that dropped short from Ollie Florent. Oh, man. It's <laughs> rough, rough. I feel for you, Sydney fans. I and, feel for you. Yeah, so they're just outside the eight, and Collingwood's going to verse them next week. Next so week, yeah. Coming up, big game. Talk about big games. Western Bulldogs <laughs> v Hawthorne. <laughs> Another absolute barn burner. Saturday just went ballistic, <laughs> mate. Also just gone out for beer somewhere else. Now, you know it's a good game when the biggest news was Sicily hating oh on Tasmania. Oh, my gosh. Now, this is hilarious. Uh, I, don't, uh. I get it, right? <laughs> I get it. It's harsh, but he's like telling the truth. But they're the sponsor, major sponsor. You play a hell of a lot of games down there. They pump a lot of money into Hawthorne. But is he lying? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I will say this though. Hawthorne, that Tasmanian sponsorship, that got out the window. You know why? Because there's a Tasmanian team down there. Don't need you no more. That is one thing that does uh, does come to mind whenever I think about this. But the Sicily thing, I felt bad for him because he was just saying his own personal opinion. He wasn't really trying to hang too much shit on like Tasmania. But I know the way, as soon as he said it, and him being one of the like the captain kind of or like one of the older guys in the leadership group there. I knew exactly when he said it. This was oh, this was a headline one on one, and I knew because Tasmania is one of their big sponsors. They're gonna throw a fit about it. It's gonna be a whole thing. Blah blah blah. And he did it on like three I W or something, which is just like just sad. <laughs> what like, are you saying about three I W? Oh, it's rough. But well, I'm, I can almost guarantee you, most of our listeners that know how to download Spotify and what the internet is don't listen to three I W. So Sicily did hate on them, but or it didn't really hate on Tassie, but it said some comments in it, and it was funny to me because after he said the comments, it goes public. Everyone freaks out about it of course Sicily comes out with this beautifully articulate written response to what he said you know chat gpt oh chat gpt the <laughs> hell out of that thing and um the uh, i'm sure the media team helped put it together and everything else and it just reminded me of the old steve smith video of the robotic just like staring at people and it was just so un it was uncharacteristic not uncharacteristic i think he didn't mean to say that kind of stuff but i just feel as though it was such a pr play 
uh, which you have to do in those situations. But yeah, that's the biggest thing that came out of this Western Bulldog versus. <laughs> oh, it was, yeah, they're not. I, I pretty much, I'm sorry to say it, but any Hawthorne game, I'm probably switching off. Like oh. they're probably the least entertaining team in the league. Mm. <laughs> That's pretty harsh, but it's, it's just, you know, when you scrap all your players and you, you know, playing kids and stuff, it's, yeah, it's not it's great. A rebuilding year. They had all that success and they really had the, uh, the three championships and uh, now they're going to have to get some new guys in. And, uh, but one cool thing, Artie Jones, Arthur Jones kicked yes. his first goal. And it's and it's great to see because he's been hovering around there like every week, threatening to kick one. And uh, Adzi Trelaw set him up, and yeah, the boys got around him. So that that was really good. And Hawthorne stuck in to their credit till about the three quarter mark, and then yeah. and then you know Bulldogs ran away with it, which is probably what you expect. So we we love a first goal. We love a first goal because the whole team gets to him. It's a it's a it's an emotional thing, a big big confidence booster and a uh, momentum swinger. I think for games. Yeah, absolutely. We'll move to the next game. Melbourne versus North Melbourne. You said, wow, this was a beautiful ripper of a game. It just kept getting worse for North too because they had Charlie Combin come <laughs> off with a horrific injury. Just that another one. Wild. There's There's been a fair few of those this year. Mm. Like, Credit to the broadcast for not showing it too. Yeah, well, they've got experience now After because hour, someone's yeah. breaking something every week, which is, <laughs> uh, you know, it's not what you want to see. So, yeah, it was a bit of a... You know, a bad it was a bad night for North. <laughs> Let's just chuck it out there. Uh, but yeah, it was it was one of them ones. I think probably both teams would have been like, "Let's call it at halftime and just go <laughs> just home, just shall go we?" Home, shall but um, yeah. I don't, what else do you say about this one, Mace? I don't know. It's uh, North Melbourne. We had a lot of hype for you at the beginning of this show and the beginning of this uh, season. They started strong. They did start very strong. I was like, you just never know what's going to happen here. We've got Ross Lyons, St. Kilda, brought him up the ladder. North Melbourne looked like they might be the same thing. Now, the last few weeks, haven't lived up to the potential. So, we're not off the North Melbourne train yet, but you got to turn things around. We needed more LDU. More LDU. And I love Suv. Suv up there, up front. Big Suv Larky. Mm. Kicking snags, which we, which we love to see. And Cam Zerha, just, just a bull. Like, there's there's good, you know, and Sheasel down back. Mm. There's plenty. There's, Sheasel. There's, oh, you know, they're just cooking at the moment. Let them cook, Mace. Let them cook. Let them cook. we we'll move on to the next one. West Coast Eagles versus Carlton. Now, West Coast, they're not cooking much. <laughs> they're, they're just a real low. At home. A at, low at West simmer. Coast too. Oh, oh, man. This is rough. It was, and I reckon going into this game, if you're a Carlton fan and you were saying that you weren't nervous, you're probably lying because yeah, <laughs> there's a little something in the back of your head going, surely we beat West Coast, don't we? Surely. But, you know, a bit of doubt going in, but they just blew them away. It was never a game. Mm. And, uh, yeah, like I was saying, it would have been cool for Charlie to kick 10. Nine's a pretty big bag. And yeah. he's up the top uh, along with Jezza Cameron uh, for the Coleman. But, you know, also, nine against West Coast. It took a specky on Hearn. Oh, and, man, that would have been just the ultimate disrespect. And then at West Coast seeing that going like... Oh, this is going to be such a long day. And um, Hearn took a really good one going back with the fly. Yeah, he did. Yes. So, I got to say this, though. If Charlie's kicked nine goals, like you get to like six, right? Six, seven, he's on. Surely everything just goes to Charlie. Like, give him a bag. Get him two bags. Get him 10 goals. Like, I just think if anyone's that close, and like the game's done, like the game's over, they're not going to win. Like, let's have a cool story come out of this. Like, Charlie kicks 10. 10 is such a cooler and better number than nine. Oh, I know, mate. Don't get me started. It was just real anticlimactic everything. Clear the 50 out. It had um shades of when they when Buddy kicked his 100th mm. and they shut down Fev, who finished on 99 for the season. Oh. Real kick in the dick stuff. Just let it happen. Let it happen. <laughs> Give him a bit, just a tiny bit of joy, but no, nine goals, which is still a great effort. Um I should have kicked 10. Yeah, that's all. We'll move on to the next one. Essendon versus Geelong. Very interesting game, this one. Yeah, it was high scoring. Mm, not a lot. Of, we want. Not a lot of defense, but weird because it was high scoring. Both teams kicked over 100, but Essendon weren't really in it the whole game. It mm. kind of got out to like that, you know, five goal ish margin and hovered around there. A couple of times they might have threatened a little bit, like if you were looking, trying to look ahead, but in hindsight, they didn't really. It was like that five-ish goal margin the whole way through. So Hawkins, career high, eight. Now Career eight, high at that age. Which is Wow. Which is nuts. So he just Did yeah. he leave the goal square? <laughs> he, 
Well, it helps when you get the 50 because Jez can just kick goals from That's 60. True. That's true. Um, but yeah, it's good to see. Love the Hawk. Like just mm. keeps getting it done. Started he was started this year with some criticism, which is it's, yeah, a bit true. He's a gun man. Oh, a bit rich. Like the dude's, you know, forty. He just goes out there and plays footy. He's still throwing rucks around. Oh my god. He must weigh a hundred and fifty kegs. I want to know what that man benches. Oh. We need to figure that out. Dude is just a stump. Like it's, he's impossible to move. His his legs are my body. <laughs> he's just that thick. Thick with two C's. Dude just gets it done. Jez had a shocker. Jez had a sh- shocker. <laughs> Absolute shocker for Jez. Why is that? 20 touches, three goals. <laughs> oh, my gosh, dude. A shocker. <sighs> I don't even you, think. It's a shocker if he doesn't kick five for you, I feel like. Yeah, I don't even think he's on track to kick 100 anymore for the <laughs> year. <laughs> It's, it's a, I don't know. It's a, this, I can't do my moon noise for Justice Week because he didn't kick five. Yeah, exactly. Very unlike him. Quiet one for Jez. Probably check him for an injury or something. There must be a little mm. niggle that he's got going on there. Uh, Some other big goal scorers though, weren't there? Yeah, it was good to see the weed. weed. I always thought they were doing like booing him or something. It was yeah. very weird. Uh, the <laughs> weed kicked five. Then Jakey the stringer, the package, kicked four. Uh, as he does. Mm. Up and down. You never know what you're going to get, but he kicked four. Four beauties. But... The nine goals combined didn't really help him. As I said, when's Essendon, Tip and Woody come back? That's all I want to know. Well, he did play, Mace, if you watched. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> and he kicked a goal, which is great to see uh, Tipper out there running around. So we're all excited about that, aren't we? I actually, he's one of my favorite players. I just didn't see the game. He's Sorry the enough. best. He's the best. No wonder you didn't see the game because it was the standalone Sunday game. <laughs> I was prepping for our game is what I was doing. Yeah, exactly. No, you had a big week. You got, you're on 60 minutes. I don't know if you know, but that's a big deal. Richmond, Gold Coast. This was the one that we kind of both missed because we were, we're, we were the yelling at the them. Adelaide calling. Screaming. <laughs> um, I'm sure many fans were doing the same thing too, I feel like. Oh, Mace. Mace, Mace, Mace. Richmond, Gold Coast. Richmond, is it panic stations yet? Oh, this is... Gold Coast, mate. I said last week they were they were in a bit of strife, and then I probably assumed they would get the job done against Gold Coast, mm. but Richmond are having a shocker. One win, five big L's, Oof. and a draw. Can't win at Marvel. Don't like it. Don't like traveling. Mm. Uh, Same here. <laughs> <laughs> long long uh, drive, Marvel Stadium. But this isn't about Richmond for me. It's about Gold Coast Football Club, yep. and it was good to see... Uh, this big win for Stewie Jew comes down, can take a breath, a little half breath, gets his mouth above water level, <gasps> and then straight back under for next week. But you know he gets a he gets a little reprieve for a week. King kicked four. Uh, big Rory Atkins was back in the team. Yeah. Love seeing Rory Atkins back in the team. Gold Coast third win for the year, uh, which leaves them a winning percentage outside the eight. Wild. Which is nuts, but it's because there's just such a log jam in the eight at the moment. But yeah. there is a couple of slots available. Yeah, they got uh, two, two come back at the end of the year too. They're one of their best players. So there is there is a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel for Gold Coast. They are a team that also goes under the radar. I think they've been building. They've been building for a year like this year for a long time. And people have... You know, gone up to Gold Coast and Gold Coast, you know, maybe didn't, you know, make it all through, all the way through four quarters and they fell off in the fourth, whatever it may be. And teams are still running over them. But this year, I feel like they're finally going to get everything together. They've got a group there. It's been around for a while. Got Witsy as a captain, has been there for a while. We love Witsy. And um, you got Kingy up forward, who's been there for a long time. These players that have now become staples at Gold Coast, I think now they're starting to finally get a bit of consistency. And Gold Coast might be one of those you find in the top eight at the end of the year. They are being underrated, but it's not for no reason. Because Mm. there has been a lot of years where they'll start the season well, and then they'll fully capitulate and fall off towards the end. So everyone is, you know... We'll celebrate Gold Coast when they're there. Yep. We'll celebrate them when they're at about round 20. They got about, you know, 12, 13 wins. Then get around them. But at the moment, we just we just cool the Jets on Gold Coast. Love them. They're playing good footy. They're challenged to come up against every week, yep. which we love to see. Now, we, don't, we don't look at Gold Coast anymore and think we're going to roll over them. I will say that. No. They're a legit team now. Absolutely. They're a legit team. Now, Richmond's having a little bit of struggle, though, and we'll see how they can pan out if they can pull out of this little, uh, this little rut they're in at the moment.
This is, and this is what I want to ask you on this. So Richmond uh, at this stage where they kind of got a new uh, couple of jet players Toronto. in, they probably thought they were going to be thereabouts or go up and they've started one and five. Oh, it's probably over. I'm going to say it. It's Ooh. probably over for them. One and five. Don't know about that. Jeez. But you've been through these situations where you're up the real pointy end and mm. then you have a fairly steep drop off. Do all the boys in the club start sweating? Start going, oh, who's old? Looking around. Are we oh. going to start playing kids? Are we going to, you know, Rewalt knew that he was probably coming towards the end, probably only had like a year left. Like, Cochin's still there. They're going to start having to make some of these tough calls mm. to these like club champions. Yeah. Relate it back to you. Do you did you feel pressure when there's like a fall off and you start going, geez, I need to step up here? Yeah. Well, once the pressure comes onto the coach, I don't think Richmond's at this point yet, but once the pressure starts going onto the coach, then the coach starts getting pressure from the board. And I think once the board starts pressuring the coach to play younger players because they're giving up on the season, in my experience, I feel like that's what happens. It's not necessarily like, because the coach wants to win as many games as he can. So he wants to play the best players every single week. But as soon as the board kind of makes a decision that we're giving up on the, the this season, then that filters down, I feel like, to the coach. And the coach makes those decisions that he doesn't want to make because he knows he's going to play players that might not be as the best players in the top 22, but he knows for the future of the club, he needs to play youth. And That's what I've, I've noticed, yeah. So I don't, I don't think Richmond's there yet. And I think Damien Horrick's fine because he's had the success and he's going to be okay. But from my experience, I feel like that's kind of the the, uh, the how it kind of go, goes and filters down from the top down. Because we've seen it so many times before. And it's always harder when the club champions that have won like mm. flags and had success. You know, North did it. They like cleaned out everyone. And, you know, it, it set them a fair way back. You know, Geelong's done it over history, made some really hard calls coming off flags to move on, you know, champions of the club. But these legends can't be in there forever. And they, no, they are well aware of that. And you'll start seeing more of them in the media more often, I feel like, whenever they know they can see the light at the end of the tunnel. And they're going, okay, I need to maybe make a career choice that helps me out for a longer time period rather than knowing or rather than just getting to the end of my career and just going, oh, I wish I would have gone into the media. I wish I would have done something else. Like you'll start seeing them kind of diversify their career choices towards the back end of their career. We can't all end on top, Mace. Now let's jump into this one. <laughs> I think Richmond will take three out of four premierships in a row, mate. Yeah, well, yeah, for sure. <laughs> a lot of those guys rolling around with three gold medals on their neck. They'll be okay. Let's jump into the Adelaide Collingwood game. It was a massive oh, one. We were watching along live. I was... I thought I was having a stroke. I wasn't. I wasn't the same. My spleen hurt. <laughs> I, was, I had these convulsing shakes. It's not good. Like oh. it's not okay to do that to people every week. But it is good for content. Mm, great uh, for content. One point win. Collingwood only led for twenty one seconds. Nice. <laughs> 21 short seconds, but sometimes it's all you need. Hey! Uh, Five-day break they were coming off. Yeah. And still managed to lift in the last. And there was a plethora of players that you could pull out and say, you had a massive part in this win, but we're going to go through the whole thing start to finish. I'll say this. It was a five-day break. Also travel on top of that. Not a lot of training you'd be able to put in those five days. It's more recovery than anything, okay? Then the team has to go out there, didn't have the best game. I think most people say that, didn't have our best game. But there was moments in that game, I feel like, that showed, we talk about fight of our team and un like, sorry, unwilling to give up and things like that. I think of Dacos Smother, you know, in the corner, like no reason to be getting to that ball. Didn't think he would make it. Still makes the effort to get out there and gets the smother. And it's weird because Nick Dacos is super soft and doesn't do hard stuff That's like that. Wants, so. um, yeah, but there's there's just moments in the game. I feel like that that fight shows up and like the team sees something like that and it just lifts everyone up, saying, "Oh man, this this is we're on, we're on, we're gonna come back here, and we're gonna kick a few more goals, and there's a chance of winning this game, even whenever we don't play our best, we still have the energy and the fight to want to get over the line." And we were looking at it. I don't know about you, but I was thinking. Collingwood had kicked five goals going into the last quarter, needed four. Mm. It was raining. Not the greatest conditions for us to be uh, winning that game in the end of the third, eh? But you never give up. Never Be give up. Belief is there. And there was so many cool little things that happened. Uh, starting with Braden Manor. Oh, love it. Now this guy oh, goat. is just the ultimate 
Clubman. Oh, Lord, now so right good. on the death, right at the siren. I think it was Johnny Noble got tackled high. Braden Maynard flying the flag. He's mm. sprinting across. Started a fight. Started like shoving everyone. He doesn't give a shit. Nah. He's just in there, just defending his teammates, and you just love to see it. There are two people on our team. If you see any scuffle, you will see them just beeline for that scuffle. And that is Taylor Adams and Brayden Maynard. I love it. We were like, where's oh, Tay? They will come out of the corner of the screen going 100 miles an hour to get into that thing. Oh, they love a scuffle. Love a scuffle. And Bruzzy, he sticks up for his teammates, man. I'm telling you, he's a and he's a bull. And it's funny because that's like Brayden's MO, right? Like he will lock down someone. You do not want to be playing on Brayden Maynard or Brayden Maynard playing on you because he will make sure you don't get to touch that football. And if you do, you're going to have to work fucking hard for it and it shows those two specifically on the siren Bruz was on the field just going ham oh. and then it cuts to Teo who's on the bench giving it to the crowd <laughs> <laughs> love it and Bruzzy comes off his shirt's fully ripped He's just got the rig out. Whoo wee. Yeah, I reckon he ripped it himself. He's in that good a nick. And mm. uh, it says competitive beast yep. around the collar of his jumper. And that he is in absolute spades. Now, <laughs> we'll touch on this just lightly because it was funny. Darcy Moore, amazing speech. Anzac Day. Oh, One of the greats. One of just all time speech. But he's got, you know, he's got light he's and human. shade. He's a human. He's He's just one of us, you know. And he gave an absolute ripper coming off at halftime where he said, the big guys for Adelaide are just fucking marking everything and we're working overtime to stop them, which he ain't lying, mate, because they were bloody marking everything. O'Brien, mate, someone just piggyback on that bloke because he was just clunking everything. And Darcy Moore was out there doing Darcy Moore tings, just cutting it off from all angles. (laughs) <laughs> Dropping the F bomb at halftime, I was like, I was frustrated because the game was going well. But then as soon as he did that, I just was like laughing my ass off because it was just true. It was just unfiltered truth. And Mark, who was interviewing, was just like, okay, all right. And he just, it was like, end of conversation. Let's just go into the rooms. Oh, I love it. It was not even mentioned. Like it wasn't yeah. even like, like the a broadcast didn't bring it back up. Nothing. Just move on, move on, move on. I love it. And then even post game, he gave another interview and it's just so refreshing. No yeah. robotic, you know, answers that players, uh, we take it one week at a time. We all did. Oh, we did it for the boys. He just gave honest opinions on what he just saw unfold in front of him. Uh, and oh, it's just so refreshing that he's just a human giving human emotions, conveying them in words that no one else can, you know, stick together. He does so well. I'm just surprised there's not a dump button from the uh, broadcast. As soon as you hear the F5, you go, yep, yep, dump. Shit happens, mate. <laughs> well, let's, let's talk about this. Adelaide, Gave us a sniff. Oh Gave us a big, big old sniff. <laughs> they were inaccurate from goal. They, I don't even know how to explain it. It was a mockery. They were missing everything. Which, I was like, thank God. And if there's one team you don't want to leave a little crack in the door mm-hmm. going into the last quarter, it's Collingwood. But geez, I don't know. <laughs> it was. Yeah, what can you say about that? They, their fans must have just been like, please get a lead. Please get a lead that these guys can't chase down. And turns out that they didn't. Collingwood uh, up to their eyeballs in the game. And then Ash Johnson, with just the smart, high IQ play, comes scrubbing into him this real Mm. 50-50 ball that could easily just be knocked out of bounds. He just taps it over his head, goes through for a point, draws the game. It's like, all right, now let's keep it in. Just a smart, level head. Jamie standing in front of him is like, what What the hell are you doing? (laughs) But... It ended up being ended up probably the well, play yeah. that won the game. Yeah. Well, it, there is Steele's kick. Now, this whole thing. I mean, you got Will Hoskin Elliott gets in the middle. Nothing but paddocks in front of him. Sees space. Sees Steele, a winger, literally spreading out to the side. Kicks it on the angle straight into the like bread basket. This man was an unreal kick. Got to give props to Will Hoskin Elliott on that. Steele goes back. He's about 40 out, let's say. We'll give him that. Steel's not the biggest kick in the world. I love the man, but he's he's a bit older like me. We we lose a bit of distance as you get older. And he makes it. Not six points, but one point. That gets us one point ahead. We are winning the game now. From all odds against us, you wouldn't believe it. Collingwood in the last 21 seconds remaining takes the lead from Steel's kick. 
Unreal. It was nuts. And I don't know. You could tell he was just happy after the game that he made the distance. <laughs> and, you know, why why would you go back and kick a goal and just settle everyone's heart rate down, Collingwood mm. victory? Let's make sure we just try to kill every Collingwood fan out there with heart attacks. It rebounding play out. And then who is at the end to cut it off? Darcy Moore. Oh, Capitan. Couldn't write it any better. Takes the mock. Game over. Makes me think almost. If Steele does kick that, right? There's 21 seconds. The ball goes back to a center bounce. There's probably a higher probability of Adelaide being able to t- tie that game than kicking a point when it's on the other side of the field and then having to go all 150 meters to get to the other side. So you're saying he did it on purpose? I'm not saying he did it on purpose. I'm saying it wasn't as bad of his outcome as probably people thought. Yeah, true. True. And they almost pulled it off. Rankin darting through a couple of Collingwood players. Gave it off and they decided Rankin to go was, along. hey. He was talking some smack. I wasn't out there on the field, but that man was jawing some people off. I don't know jawing people off means. <laughs> he was jawing with boys. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't make it any better, mate. I want to say one more thing. Nick Dacos tagged. Oh, uh, yeah. Guess what? Other Dacos, I'll take 31 <laughs> and a goal. <laughs> and a goal. Another Dacos stepping up at a big moment, comes through, kicks a goal, puts Collingwood back in contention for the game, and... You know, you can't stop both of them. No. There's always one day cost running around there, and I reckon if you tag Nick and you tag Josh, Peter will jump the fence <laughs> and kick six. You just can't stop them. But so true. top of the ladder, I will point out, Collingwood has faced six of the top nine teams, and mm. Collingwood obviously being one of them. So they've versed six of the next eight. So that's they've already done a lot of hard work early days. Yeah, it's a pretty even ladder, though. I will say, even the ones that are outside of that eight that you're talking about, they're still good teams, and they're still teams that can beat anyone on any given day. Yeah, some of those teams down the ladder, like you, you have to verse West Coast at home, which is a big challenge, as Carlton just proved. Um, and, you know, points. Hawthorne coming up, probably <laughs> versus them in Tassie. Um, but, yeah, plenty of good stuff coming up in this season. It was a great win. Big game coming up next week. You versus... Who the hell do you Sydney. Verse? We're playing <laughs> Sydney, mate, and there's a chance I might be playing. So I've got to try to get better by the end of the week to be able to hopefully get into contact and be able to train with the boys. And you know, it's been a rough few days of me getting back into running because essentially they are brutally murdering me at the moment, just running my ass ragged. But it's all part of it. Um, it's part of necessities to be able to play again. So exciting times. We will see. It's all uh, up to the doctor's decision this week. Big week. Big mm. week for the mice. Oh, one more big big thing for this week. Podcast coming out later. Jock Landale. Jock Landale is playing for the Phoenix Suns in the NBA Finals right now. He's playing with people like Kevin Durant. He's playing with people like Devin Booker. He's playing with people like Chris Paul. This man is literally probably the most successful Australian basketball player over there playing in the NBA Finals right now. And it's pretty nuts because as cool as that story is, all the stuff that happened in the lead up was insane. Insane. So it's a great podcast. You have to hear this. Check it out. Coming out later this week. Oh, big week. Big week. Go check out 60 Minutes with Mace on it. Yeah. Oh, my God. Just juicy content. A lot happening. A lot happening, Brayden. But we will have to wrap it up there. Like I said, check out Jock Lindell. If you're a sporting fan, you will love it. It's an absolute ripper of an episode. Hilarious stories he's got in there. And a massive, massive thank you for everyone that's listened in on the sports segment wrap-up. Prayers up to Jerry Springer. Prayers up. Prayers up.